Well, this is uh, this is I think this is perhaps the most important foundational thing, which is different ways of behaving in different contexts of your life. Yeah. So, uh, on a dating app where someone has swiped right on you, you're, they're interested in dating, and you guys are on your first date. That's one context. Out at a public venue, when whenever that happens, but that's like a bar or something yeah, like yeah. that where people tend to go to meet. Uh, out at a public venue where people don't go to meet, like a library mm -hmm. or something like that. And then you've got work. the work or something like that. Uh, I've said something like that a hundred times. <laughs> Each one of those is going to have different levels of what is acceptable without being creepy. Yes. And it's going to be the most uh, conservative in the workplace. And then on your first date with someone who has already indicated that they like you on a dating app, you can go more direct with mm -hmm. the flirting. So within all of those, I think what generally what you're you're looking to do is to move uh, one or two levels up. So if you're in the workplace, you don't want to necessarily like be giving big hugs or all that kind of stuff. What you can say is, hey, would you like to go get a drink this Saturday night? Which is to change a context to over here where flirting looks different. And we can talk about exactly what that is. But within the workplace, I think the number one thing that you're trying to do is to just see if they're interested uh, and and I think most people get this in moving to a different context with you where flirting can happen in a way that is not going to jeopardize your job. Mm -hmm. Once you're in that sort of a context, what are the things to do? So let's let's run to God. It's been so long since I've been to a bar. Well, well so uh, one thing I'll say, and you can think on what you were uh, want to add is so you've you've gone through Christmas University, so we'll go through it. The how to make good first impression, right? Fun, trust, respect, mm -hmm. and then turn it on to them. The only thing that you have to add is turn fun into fun and attractive. Yeah. So that's going to slightly change what that first phase looks like, but it's still the same. So in terms of uh, how do I make them attracted to me before you go into the asking them a bunch of questions about themselves part and gushing over how cool they are part, it's about being fun and attractive still. Mm -hmm. And then the flip I would have is in all your relationships, you probably have standards, right? You wouldn't just be friends with anyone, but... Uh, in a bar, I think there's a tendency when you're attracted to someone to just let those fall to the wayside and laugh at every joke. Tell them how amazing they are. What do you do? Oh, I'm a, a teacher, fitness instructor. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. That's so amazing. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. just like gushing and uh, don't do that. <laughs> Have real standards. And then if something truly is amazing, you can say it. But it'll probably take a couple questions to get there, which will make the person feel like you're actually assessing if you like them or not. Which you should be assessing yeah. their yeah. shell. Yeah. Um, so that's going to help a lot. I'm thinking of common mistakes that I see. But they, had, it, I mean, the biggest mistake I see is people go up and they immediately try to s switch to the trust phase or the make them feel special phase. And I actually would just double down on what you've learned in CU and say the most important thing is fun. And the only thing I'd add is fun slash attractive, mm -hmm. which means come in making jokes. You've already done the thing about crushing small talk questions, right? Because you're in CU. So your answers might be different in the office versus the bar, but that exercise is still what you want to do, which is go to a bar and see what people are asking you. Are they asking you where you're from, what you do? Okay, how can you answer those questions in the ways that we went through so that it's funny or attractive? So it's the same kind and of... Let, I want to elaborate a bit on what that is because they're different in different contexts. Well, I'm trying not to give away our whole course. <laughs> That's fine. Give it. A, if I can give it away in these next five minutes, then it's not worth taking. Okay. Uh, so things that are attractive... Uh, Consider what are the types of things that women are often drawn to. If you are ambitious, if you have uh, fun, fascinating stories, if you're socially connected, if you have hobbies like guitar or whatever. Again, a lot of these come back to, especially if you're young, ambition is one of the most attractive things. You don't have to have done everything, but be interested. Take the storytelling module where we talk about how to... Uh, leave clues and threads so that people want to pick up on your story so yeah leaving open open, open loops, loops. And, and we talk about like throwing the velcro out right so mm -hmm. when you're telling a story don't oh where are you from well i grew up in philadelphia yeah, yeah, and then yeah. i moved to new york <laughs> for work and then i moved to brazil because i started a business and then i went yeah. to california even if it's a cool story i've said it all mm -hmm. so you want to kind of leave things open like oh well, i kind of i moved all around the world for a bit but i actually moved to la from brazil I to run to to uh, help grow this business that I have, and yeah. so now there's like, wait a second, why were you in Brazil? What is this business that you have? And but you might I slip one or two answer, things. I didn't even answer where I'm from. I didn't mm -hmm. say the suburbs of Philadelphia because that's not uh, when they ask where you're from. They're just trying to learn more about you. They don't care about that specific piece of information. So me saying I moved here, I traveled all around the world, but I actually moved here from Brazil. That's that story is the same thing as saying from the suburbs of Philadelphia in terms of 
giving them what they wanted, which is more insight. Mm -hmm. But that's the more attractive insight. And to Charlie's point, it leaves the open loop of like, wait, where else did you travel? Or wait, why Brazil? Or wait, yeah. why LA? Um, so yeah, so it's a, it's a great point. Like leave those open loops there in your story while also basically you know they're going to ask you the common questions that you get asked. So have some semblance of what you want to answer for those. Mm -hmm. And and again, just so we don't spend the whole time, we have 20 more questions to go here. Uh, I'll give you the broad structures. And as, as I'm re-remembering this, context is different. We talked about your contexts. Don't do, you can do some of this. You can be f engaging and fun in any context. You can do this in the workplace. You mm -hmm. can talk about your core travels. In fact, that might make someone more open to going out on a date scenario with mm -hmm. you. But the general three emotions that are different in dating than they might be in uh, just making friends or, or getting along at the workplace are going to be that fun, as Ben said, shifts towards attraction. So the things that you're leaving in your stories are more of the flavor that we talked about. That there is a room, as Ben mentioned, for standards. People like to feel like they got into Harvard University. They don't want to feel like uh, you're just looking for any individual and you'll say whatever it takes for them to like you for two reasons. It doesn't make them feel special. And it also is kind of like, what's up with this person that they'll take anything that they can get. Mm -hmm. So this doesn't mean that you need to be mean to anybody, but it means that it's really worth sitting down and we should re-release the dating course. It helps to go through like, what am, what are my deal breakers? What am I not willing to date? Even if someone was beautiful, someone's rude to wait staff. And I see that even if they're beautiful, is that a turnoff? And if the answer is yes, fantastic. Like those deal breakers are good to know and it's helpful to embody them and sometimes even work them into conversation. Mm -hmm. And then the last piece, once you have those two, is there's a degree of sexual tension. This is a big no-no in the workplace. Yep. <laughs> but as you move towards that bar scenario or that first date scenario, this has a lot to do with what is the proximity with which you're talking? If you're taking a dance lesson, can you look each other in the eye at close range? Put your hands on her hips. Uh, are, are the... As you flirt with her, is there innuendo going on? And we can talk about deep, more deeply and all these things, throw them in the course uh, if we re-release it. But those three pieces are the biggest difference. And they are more, it follows a lot of the same structure of Charisma University, just with slightly amended, uh, if you want to say, uh, core emotions that you're targeting at each stage of the interaction. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. I was, just, I was also just thinking I'm at a bar how do I indicate that I'm trying to be more than friends? And then I'm thinking if I'm, and I feel like it almost happens automatically because I'm a man approaching a woman. So mm -hmm. that makes me think perhaps this question is about the friend group. Like I've rarely, well, we can't answer every single no, 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 possibility. No, no, no. I'm, just thinking, I'm just thinking I'm in a bar and I talk to a woman. I don't think she thinks I'm trying to be her friend. So I, I imagine the friend, the fact that some you're guys in, purposely come off as, as friendly because they are so nervous to indicate uh, that they're interested in someone. And so we, there are, there, are, you, you do need to indicate that. Like, and so this is stage two of letting the standards piece is in there. You're not just communicating, oh, I don't, I don't like people that are rude to waiters. You're also communicating, and this person is really fun or funny or t t whatever it is, like, is playful. You're like, honest to God, you are one of the most fun people. You are super fun to hang out with. I didn't think that I was going to meet someone this fun tonight. All right, you got to get away from me because I'm falling in love with you. Ha 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 but it lets them know in a playful way. And again, this is the push pull that I did in the video with Russell Brand, where you give them a compliment and then a playful release of that tension. You can check that video out. Uh, that lets them know that you're interested and it lets them know why you're interested in them. So we could, we could go back through all of this stuff. this for six hours. It's Dating in 2020. Yeah. <laughs> Hope that you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to see more like this and have us do more podcasts, we are 100% funded by our generous patrons. And if you'd like to contribute, there's a link in the description and we'll have one pop up on the screen right here so that we can do more podcasts where we have fun conversations and hopefully some deep ones like this. Either way, hope that you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.